All right, well, here we are again, and uh, I'm going to uh, spend just probably, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine minutes, hopefully no more than that, uh, talking about where we're headed for this unit, okay? So as you can see from the syllabus, I'm going to kind of veer my attention over here because I'm looking at the syllabus as well. Uh, we'll be in um, Tang chapters 8 and 9, where we'll be looking at career counseling strategies and techniques, along with information technology and career information, okay? So some important chapters, and we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, we'll also be looking at LipTAC chapters 5 and 6. And what I love about the LipTAC book, um, I love this idea, just the titles are so simple. That's why I love what we're looking at here. Um, chapter 5 uh, being titled Developing Rapport with the Client. It's so important. It seems like a simple little thing. It's just still such an important thing. And then Self and World of Work Assessment. Um, so these are really important chapters. Um, there's lots of great resources in these chapters, and I hope that you'll pay close attention uh, there. And then, of course, we're looking at Schwen and Bass uh, parts four through five. So we got some great reading with that. Um, when we look in Tang, so I was actually looking through and just kind of figuring out, like, where are we headed for this unit? I love what I see on page 228, so I don't know if you have your book with you, um, but if you um, watch the other video first where I'm answering in some ways some of the questions you asked about LipTAC, um, there's some key question techniques that are asked on page 220 under commitment. So we see this in chapter uh, 8, so career counseling strategies and techniques. Um, and I love that it says, what are your reasons for even, I mean, just basic, simple questions. What are your reasons for seeking career counseling in the first place? Seems like kind of a simple question and yet so important. What are your expectations? Um, I think that sometimes we anticipate that we're going to do something that's going to blow somebody's mind or we're going to have, all, you know, all, and we talked about this, you don't have all the answers, we're not supposed to do all the answers, but we just have the, kind of these unrealistic expectations um, and we're kind of projecting them on the client when we don't even know what it is that they want, right? Um, uh, are there barriers? How do we resolve these barriers? Uh, what's your career history? How can we learn from that career history? Um, have you been on a career path that you've been following? What's that look like? Why has that been your path? Has it been a a helpful, fruitful path? You know, all these different questions that we could ask. Um, what are the two or three career questions that you'd like to have answered as a result of career counseling? And I think in a lot of ways, even what we've kind of modeled in our LipTAC responses, in light of what you just read, what are you going to do, right? Or what's the one actual item? And do you have any questions? What questions do you have? And how can those questions help to inform the actions that you eventually make, whether it's right away or at some point uh, down the road? So these questions are super, super, super important. And so I hope that you'll pay really close attention to the questions. Speaking of questions, I mentioned uh, this in the other video I just posted. Here's a great book called Practicing, it's probably backwards to you, I don't know if it is, it is to me. Practicing Positive Psychology, Coaching, Assessments, Activities, and Strategies for Success. This is by Robert, uh, I think you say it, Biswas Diner. Um, he's got a master's degree in clinical psychology from Pacific University, I think that's up in Oregon, and then founded uh, Meridian Life Coaching LLC and does life coaching, career coaching, coaching, and all those things. And what I love about this book is um, it is it's a book filled with assessments, activities, and and lots of great questions. In fact, I mentioned a client I was working with that I kind of expedited the counseling and coaching process uh, over from four weeks to two weeks, condensed it down, and I used a lot of the questions in here. And what I love about the work that we do, you know, I was actually able to, you know, say, hey, I'm using this book. Um, it's got some great questions, and I think it's going to be really helpful uh, for you in this conversation to help you better understand, right, uh, what it is that you want and where it is that we're headed. And so I think I, I may have mentioned this before. Einstein once said the most creative people are the best at hiding their resources. And I told, I told her this. I said, I'm not trying to hide my resources. A lot of this isn't even my own ideas. Um, and I wouldn't actually be serving you the best that I possibly can if I tried to make it all about my own personal ideas. So I'm going to pull from, I'm going to know all about all sorts of different resources that are out there so that I can make sure that I give you the best support um, and coaching that I possibly can. So that's a great text. I'll, I'll post a link to that book as well. Um, uh, but I, I think you'll find some things in there that are really kind of powerful, positive, and enjoyable for you as well. All right, so, so that's where we're headed uh, this upcoming unit. We've got LipTech uh, 321, number three. Okay, so remember three question, or uh, three takeaways, two questions, one actionable item, one big aha moment, right? So three, kind of, ah, that's amazing, two questions, one actionable item. 
Uh, Schwen and Bass, entry and discussion number five. So again, for our purposes, it's just, a, it's just an entry, no discussion. Uh, you've got uh, the fifth case study from the Tang text, which I'll post all the information for you. And then the exercise number three out of the, ta uh, the Tang text, okay? So lots of great things to be thinking about. Um, I'll probably share some other videos and some things to read, maybe even some other questions for you to respond to. Uh, but again, this, this role that I'm here to play is to bring together all sorts of information that is available to everybody, but I'm trying to help make it palpable, understandable, digestible in ways that help you to really better understand the content so you can ultimately go out and better serve the client. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to email me. Um, send me a note through Canvas. Um, I'm always available to respond, hopefully as quickly as I can. Um, while I'm still not fully recovered from the accident, I'm much more functional, I'm able to move, I'm feeling a lot better than I was at one point, so I'm really grateful for that. And I, uh, grateful for your patience and kind of me getting back up to speed. I feel like it took kind of a significant chunk of time of my life and I was just kind of out of it with the kids and work and all that, um, but back up. I'm really grateful that we had a spring break last week and I, I am sure that you are as well. Hope you had some nice time to rest. So yeah, any questions, any way that I can better support you, let me know. Um, I continue to be really, just am really impressed. I mean, that's the beauty of this class. It's so unique and so different from the rest of your studies. Uh, that I feel like it kind of allows students to communicate in ways they may not have been able to otherwise. And so that's been fun for me to hear from you, to experience your writing, to get a you know, kind of an insight into your thinking. Um, and then even to see, I think what I've gathered, uh, you know, I know it's only two of you, but I think what I've gathered is there's some real kind of refreshing things that are taking place out of this class to help you perhaps even rethink um, uh, what it is that you, uh, you know, maybe have been taught or how you used to view things. Um, you know, if you watch that video on the front, the home page of our class, the backwards brain bicycle, I love that idea because what he's getting at is we need to sometimes unlearn some things so that we can relearn some things. What I'm not here to do, I'm not here to kind of twist and undo your learning and just kind of leave you spinning, right? That's not helpful at all for anybody especially around ideas of, you know, even um, when you talk about more theological training, different things, it's never helpful to just kind of deconstruct without building back up. But I do think, and I would, I would concur with Alvin Toffler, where he said that literally the 21st century are not those who cannot read and write, but it's those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And so perhaps in reading uh, kind of in tandem, you know, Tang and Liptak and Schwen and Bass, these are content pieces that are helping you to to relearn some things that you thought you knew and to think about them just slightly different. I hope that's really been the outcome of our class so far. So keep up the great work. Thank you for your involvement, your engagement, and your um, just dedication to uh, really doing exemplary work. So again, if I can help in any way, please let me know. Um, if not, I look forward to seeing you online and hearing more uh, from all it is that you have uh, kind of rolling around in your mind that you're going to put out there on papers. You pen your different responses. Have a great couple of weeks for Unit 5, and we'll see you online.